Welcome to Ask Jerry and Rebecca, part of Cold Wax Academy, a free video series where we answer your questions about cold wax medium. Hello. Welcome to this episode of Ask Jerry and Rebecca, now part of Cold Wax Academy. Today's question comes to us from Sonia McArdle, Jane Korich, and Janine Adamo. And it's about storing and shipping cold wax paintings. And it's a technical question. There are a few things that are involved. And so I have a list of things that I want to make sure I cover. First of all, whether drying, sorry, first of all, whether storing paintings or shipping paintings in general, the drier your painting is when you store it or ship it, the better off you are. The more time you let leave your painting to sit and rest and cure, the more durable that surface is going to be and the less likely you have to worry about things during shipping or storage. Second, temperature and humidity. Rebecca and I both have studios that are fairly open to the environment. Our studios go through fairly large temperature swings and humidity swings. In general, our paintings have not had any issues. When we have had issues, it's been with some warping of um, the panel itself and not an actual problem with the paint surface or the painting you know, piece of the whole, uh, the whole item. So if you can maintain a more steady temperature and a more steady humidity, that's going to be better overall. Once your paintings are cured, temperature has a lot less effect on the surface than when they're more wet. So in my mind, if you're not going to store your paintings in a place that's going to get really hot, you don't have to worry so much. But if you're going to ship a painting, if you're shipping in the summer and you're going to ship it in a non-temperature controlled environment like FedEx, you need to be very careful that that painting is well set up because until oil paintings or sorry, oil and cold wax paintings are cured, they are quite susceptible to heat, more susceptible even than encaustic paintings until they're cured. Once they're cured, they're quite resistant to heat, but in that zone in between, they're actually quite sensitive to heat. Uh, the next uh, portion of that is verticality versus horizontality. You are always better off to have your paintings vertical. That means when you store them, you're better off to have them stacked against each other rather than on top of each other for several reasons. One is that gravity itself will tend to pull a panel and could make it bow and that goes away mostly when you stack it vertical as long as you don't let it lean. The other part is if you have paintings stacked horizontally on top of each other, all of that weight builds up and pulls down on the lowest painting. So each painting from bottom up is experiencing less weight, but the bottom painting is experiencing the most weight. If you do it vertically, then really on the surface, they're not experiencing any weight. That can absolutely apply to shipping as well because if you have something stacked on top of your painting when it's being shipped and it's not fully dry, even if it is fully dry potentially, you can have pressure on that surface and have indentation into your paintings. So vertical is always better than horizontal. If you're going to ship your painting, then obviously it goes without saying you need enough packing material around the edge and over the surfaces, both front and back to protect it from any trauma that might happen during the shipping process. You need to have something on the surface of your painting, whether you're shipping or storing, that keeps it physically separated from anything else touching it. During shipping, that's perhaps something like glassine or something like that, that is smooth and keeps anything, it's basically a barrier, I should say, between your painting and whatever's on the other side of it. When you're shipping, you might use you know, packing material that potentially could create an imprint in your painting. You don't want that. You always want some kind of barrier so that nothing touches and sticks to the surface of your painting. When I store my paintings in my studio or in a storage facility, 
I stack them vertically and put something between the two paintings so that the, the one doesn't actually physically touch the other. There's always something soft and protective between the two. That thing should never have a pattern in it because that pattern could get pressed into your painting. If you're going to ship a painting, make sure that the person opens it as soon as it arrives. The less time your painting spends in a shipping container, the better. And that's just general practice. Cardboard boxes are full of acids. Packing crates are full of packing materials. None of that stuff is good for your painting. Your painting should be out and free from being touched or enclosed by anything. So if you ship a painting, ship it as dry as you can, pack it well, and have the person unpack it as soon as it gets there. Um, I think that's everything. So I hope that helped answer your questions and we'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.